Ephesians is our text. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. It says, be not drunk with wine. So how many would agree that getting drunk and being drunk is, is a bad idea? Hmm? Would you agree with that? The Bible says so. Don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess. Actually, that word excess is a little bit misleading in the King James. It means you get out of control. It's not just talking about you drank too much. It means you get into excess and wrong stuff. Well, that's obvious too, isn't it? But be filled with the Spirit. Here, being filled with the Spirit is compared to being drunk. Now, a lot of folks wouldn't think I'd be right. But again, the Bible's right. Yes. No matter what you think. Mm -hmm. And it's the very next verse that, that the sentence doesn't end. It just pauses. Be filled with the Spirit speaking. Say that out loud. Be filled, Be filled. with the Spirit, with the Spirit. Speaking. speaking. You can't separate the two. You can't separate the being filled from the speaking. Either initially or throughout life. Be filled speaking. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now this is not talking about songs out of a hymnal. Notice the word spiritual. These are spirit inspired songs. Songs and psalms and hymns by inspiration. At the moment, at the time. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Amplified says it like this, verse 18, Amplified. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. Now let's just back up. If Jesus is your Lord and the Word of God is your standard, do you need any other scriptures not to be getting drunk with wine? No. no. This settle it for you? Yes. Okay. Because there are some folks that need to quit getting drunk. It's not helping you. It's hurting you. It's hurting you. It's causing problems. It causes problems between you and God. Hurts your relationship. Causes problems between you and your, your family. Your work. Hmm? Getting drunk. Bad idea. Right? No need to get in under condemnation about it. You just need to make up your mind. Is it something I should be doing or not? Are you a believer? Is the word of God your guide? The Lord doesn't want you to be condemned. He doesn't want you to kick yourself. He just wants you to be free. Getting drunk all the time is not being free. It's not helping. It's hurting. That's debauchery. But, notice this language, ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. There are natural stimulants and there is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> He said, uh, in the complete Jewish Bible, it says it like this, don't get drunk with wine, this is the CJB, because it makes you lose control. You see why they translated it that way. We mentioned that earlier. The issue is not just that you drank too much wine, you got drunk, and you're not at yourself. Hmm? Not, I'm not asking for any testimonies, but <laughs> maybe you heard about some folks that they got drunk and some bad things happened. 
They said and did some things they shouldn't have done. There's a lot of people in this generation who are no longer with us. They died young and they died wrong. Because they got drunk and did stupid stuff. The enemy is watching for these opportunities. That you are not at yourself and it allows him to come in and influence. And if you don't know what you're saying and doing, Who's at the wheel? <laughs> Who's inspiring what you're saying? Who's directing what you You can wind up yielding to a wrong spirit. And if it's a wrong spirit, he's not going to lead you into something good. He's going to lead you into destruction. He'll try to hurt you. He'll try to kill you and other, everybody around you. How many people have died because of drunk drivers? This is terrible stuff. This is stealing. This is killing and destroying. And the thing is, you don't just have to be dry and not have any fun. There's something better than getting drunk. There's something better than getting high. I know a lot of people don't know it. They may not believe it, but the Bible is true. The Bible is true. There's something way, way better than getting drunk. It's called being filled with the Spirit. Amen. And that's not supposed to be something that happens one time and, and then not again. Ever be filled. Keep on being filled with the Spirit. Everybody say it. Keep on. Keep on. Keep on, Keep on. Keep on. Being filled. That means you get, and you see this in the book of Acts. Same people that got filled in Acts 4, Acts 2, got filled again in Acts 4. There is a being filled and then being, being filled again and being filled again and being filled again. Now go with me if you would to the book of Mark. And I'm going to do what I believe the Lord directed us to do. We've talked about this. We've launched into it. But we're going to back up to some basics about this. How do you get filled with the Spirit? How about that? Am I like that? How to be filled with the Spirit. This is being Spirit filled 101. <laughs> In Mark, the 16th chapter, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Years ago on the cereal commercial, they said about the little guy, he likes it. <laughs> They were surprised. <laughs> you like it. Mark 16, are you there? Verse 15, we call this the Great Commission. You could call it the prime directive of the church. Now, people have made it to be a lot of other things. But this is, this is to be our central focus the bulk of our energies, our money, our resources, our efforts are to be toward this. Hmm? What's the Great Commission? The main prime directive for the church? Go. And people say, what a preacher need an airplane for? Go. <laughs> Go places. And come back. Amen. Go where? Does God care about people everywhere? Yes. Go, you go. Go ye, we'd say you go into all the world and do what? Now, now, there's a lot of churches and a lot of people, Christian people who have changed this. They've changed it into feeding people, clothing people, building houses. They've made that, the and, and don't get me wrong, that's wonderful. We've been involved in some of that, would like to do more. But it's not the Great Commission. It's not. People have changed the Great Commission. And they've done away with the spiritual side of it and made it entirely natural. 
and made out like the most important thing is doing things for people naturally. It is, it is important to do natural things. And it's wonderful. But if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul, what have you done? What, there was no profit in it. So we need to have first things first. What's number one? And you see how messed up people are because they say, you know, we're spending a lot of money on buildings. We're spending a lot of money on TV and internet. And there's a lot of folks out there that would say, that's wrong. That could be put to better use feeding people. Don't a lot of people say it? A lot of people say it and think it. But it's because they believe the poor are more important than Jesus. Yes, they do. Another way of saying that, they believe the poor are more important than the Word. He is the Word. And, and it's subtle, it's tricky, it's the devil. He, he's fine with you doing all kinds of stuff. But don't tell people the gospel. Don't preach the word to people. Don't tell them about being a new creature in Christ Jesus. Don't tell them they got authority in the name of Jesus. Don't tell them they can be full of power and have the greater one inside. Don't tell them they can be healed. Don't tell them God can be their provider. You do a bunch of stuff, but don't do that. So there's reasons, I'm just going into some detail, why this, a lot of this is fought so hard. Uh, people don't realize what they're voicing and what they're pushing, but the enemy's behind it. And they've been deceived. It's wonderful to do natural things for people. But it's not the Great Commission. People have changed what Jesus said. Go into all the world. Come on, help me out. Is this the head of the church talking? Yes. Hmm? yes. Is there something more important as a directive to the church than this that you know of? No. Go into all the world and do what? Preach the hmm? Get them to be inclusive. <laughs> Get them to initiate the right social programs. Get them, huh? Hmm? Get them to em embrace all religions. And just, just, let's just love everybody and, and be at peace. It sounds good, but it's a lie. And it ain't never happening. It's never happening. Well, we're all brothers. No, we're not. That's a lie. That's not true. There are two spiritual families in the earth. Not one. Two. Jesus said to some of the most religious people of his day, you are of your father, the devil. He told preachers that. <laughs> and they killed him too. Proved. Is that right? They did what their father bid them do, and he's a murderer. He wasn't just trying to hurt their feelings, it's just how it was. Go into all the world, proclaim the good news. What is the good news? Oh. Jesus took your place. Yes, sir. I said he took your place. He became sin with your sin. Amen. He took your infirmities, bore your sicknesses, carried your pains. Yes. Chastisement of your peace was on him. Yes. Became poor so you could be rich. Yes. Rose from the dead. Yes. Overcame all without sin. Overcame all of it. Yes. Went to the right hand of the Father where he ever lives to make intercession for you and I. And is preparing a place for you. Amen. Right. Is this good news or is this good news? And will soon come back and receive you and me to himself. And so will we ever be with the Lord in his kingdom, immortal, incorruptible, forever and ever in a kingdom that has no end. Somebody say good news, good news, good news. That is the biggest need of the entire planet. To hear this, to know this, to believe this, 
to receive this, to feed on it day and night, walk in it. That's the biggest need of all the world. Not a perfect government, not a perfect economy. <laughs> That's, you get that right, the other stuff will come behind. You don't get that right, no matter what you do, the other stuff will never be right. You make some temporary things and the Lord will do some things to help us, just to sustain us, but you're not going to get everything right down here until the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords establishes His kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all these kingdoms become His. Yes. And He needs some people to help Him take care of that and I'm looking at some of them Amen. that are actually in training. That's what, that's what earth is. Earth yeah. is faith school. Right. Yeah. It is to train you. He gave you the, the, the armor of the spirit and left some demons and curse to practice on. Right. <laughs> Come on, think about it. If you had the breastplate of righteousness, and helmet of salvation, and loins girt, shield of faith, sword of the spirit, what if you're all dressed up and nowhere to go? <laughs> no, nothing to deal with? Right. That wouldn't be any good. How, how are you going to develop? He had to leave some stuff. You can't be an overcomer without coming over. Amen. Something. There's got to be something to come over. <laughs> That's why if you think right, you count it all joy. When you encounter something, you'd say, hey, it's another opportunity to exercise what God has given us and to overcome and demonstrate the goodness of God in the earth and even get some reward too. Hallelujah. Whew. What's the Great Commission? <laughs> Go into all the world. Proclaim the good news. To who? Everybody. Every created being. Keep going, verse 16. He that believes and is baptized, acts on it, will be saved. He that doesn't believe, he'll be saved too. Some people preach that. But do you believe the Bible? He'll be damned, or another word is condemned. 17. And these signs follow them that believe. My name they'll cast out, that's, that's the word for demons, evil spirits. Well, they'll have authority. They shall speak with new tongues. Now, read all that to get to this. They'll do what? Who will speak with new tongues? Wild Pentecostals. Huh? A, a few extreme preachers. A splinter group no. in Christendom no. that hadn't caught up with the times. You know, basically ignorant folks that just don't have enough education. Huh? That who? Them that, that follows who? Them that believe. Believers. Believers. Right. Is it true that this is one of the things that should be a part of the life of all Believers. Yes. Yes. That was the basics I'm talking about Amen. that the Lord directed me to come back to. Yes. Now, if you don't speak with tongues and you're a believer, don't get mad at me. Don't get upset. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> I was a believer for years who didn't speak with tongues. Absolutely saved. But now, for decades now, I've been a believer who does speak with tongues. And so I have experience to say which is better. If you don't, then you don't know. Just be honest, and if you don't, you don't know. But any, any tongue talkers in the house, would you say with is better? Would you, would you say, got a bunch of witnesses? I can hear him in Branson too, hollering. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Two big things 
you need to know about speaking with tongues. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up and take my time and go over it. And I, you know, at the rate we're moving tonight, <laughs> it's probably going to take some more times of coming back. But uh, uh, two big things. Everybody say two, two big things. About what? Speaking with tongues. Number one, you need to know. Not, not somebody's opinion or theory or idea. From the Bible. You need to know. That speaking with tongues is for everybody, every believer, and it's available now. Right now. Speaking with tongues is available for every, did you hear that word? Every, I'm talking about Catholic folks, I'm talking about Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterian. Every by Lutheran, come on, are y'all with me? Everybody. Now, if you say, well, I, I don't believe that, that's why I'm talking. <laughs> Stay with me. Go through the scriptures with me. Now, you've got to make up your mind. Are you going to believe just what you want to believe and ignore the Bible? Are you going to believe what other men told you? Or are you going to believe the Bible? Now, if you're not going to respect the Bible, it would be hard for anybody to help you. But if you will submit to the scriptures, you'll come to the place where you see what I'm talking about. How can you be so sure? Well, it's either true or it's not, right? And it is. It is gloriously, wonderfully true. And one of the reasons that we, uh, we, we got to deal with this is because you can't separate being filled with the Spirit from this. People think they disagree with that too. But again, that's why we're going back to the basics. Number one is what? Speaking with tongues is for who? Every believer. When? It's available right now. Right now. Number two Speaking with tongues is supposed to happen every day yes. in your life. Yes. Speaking with tongues is supposed to occur every day in every believer's life. I know millions of people don't believe that. I know people think they... Uh, even, even think they got scriptures that contradict that, which is why I'm going to take you to those scriptures. We're going to look at them. We're going to look at other scriptures. But these are the two big things that you got to get, or else wise you'll be hindered from receiving. Speaking in tongues is for every believer, available right now. Without you making yourself any better. Come on, are y'all with me? If you're a believer, you've been made ready to receive. You couldn't make yourself ready. That's why you had to receive him. But then secondly, did you hear the second part? What about speaking with tongues? Once you have received, it's not supposed to be an odd experience once in a while that you get all worked up or you get excited and you spoke in tongues a little bit. Speaking in tongues is supposed to be every day. Every day. And you and I need to, well I won't speak for you. Me and a lot of us need to speak more in tongues. I said, me too. Me and most of us need to do a lot more speaking in tongues. It is the key to the spirit-filled life, which is why the Lord directed us, no, y'all need to come back. <laughs> Let me read something that my father in the faith, Kenneth Hagin, who's in heaven now, 
I'm looking forward to seeing him again. He, we had such great times together. I can't put a value on what we got through his ministry. But I want to give you two things that he said about speaking with tongues. He said speaking with tongues is an initial sign or evidence of the Holy Spirit's indwelling. Initial would be the beginning. Or the next phrase. He said it is the beginning of it all. This is the part we need to focus on. It is what speaking with tongues, it's the beginning of it all, of something else. I've found in my own life, he said, that the more I pray and worship God in tongues, the more manifestation of the other gifts of the Spirit I have. The less I talk in tongues, the less manifestations I have. Speaking with tongues, he said, is the door into the rest of the spiritual gifts. If you don't receive speaking with tongues then you're not going to make progress with prophecy or word of knowledge or word of wisdom or gifts of healings, working of miracles. You'll relegate all that to some natural thing and miss out on the whole thing. And you got to watch about some modern so-called translations. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14, they mess it up. They interpret it in the light of their lack of experience. And a lot of these so-called modern translations are actually not translations. They are not word-for-word translations of the text. They are paraphrases. They are people putting into words what they think it meant. I have a strong aversion to that. You should too. Don't tell me what you thought he meant. That's right. That's right. I believe every word of God, the Spirit of God inspired, is important. It's important that it was said just the way that it was said. And a lot of it you're not going to understand, and you don't need to try to figure it out for me. Don't tell me what you think it means. Tell me what it said. And that's it. Why am I, why am I saying this? Watch out about some of these translations. A bunch of modern translations. And it may be pretty good on one part. And then another part, it's not, it's bad. If you got a question about something, look up the words. See what they really meant. And and it doesn't hurt you to to have a good transliteration. You know, you'll see me a lot of times quoting Young's literal translation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't read easy. It reads backwards to us, and the, the flow is not nice, but it's accurate. Don't you like accuracy? Yes. Don't tell me what you think he meant. <laughs> I got the Spirit inside me. He'll tell me what he meant, right? But the reason I say it is because a lot of modern translations, they just completely get it wrong when it comes to speaking with tongues. They have said a bunch of stuff in there. They've changed it around because they don't speak in tongues. And so they try to make it into something else. But I think it's obvious, if you'll be honest at all, the believers in the beginning days of the church spoke in tongues. Did they or not? Almost everybody, even people that don't believe it's for today, at least they'll say, well, yeah, they must have. (laughs) It's hard to get away from that. So if that's true, are we saying it changed? Who changed? What changed? When did it change? The Bible will never receive a revision. Version 2.0. If somebody comes out with one, run. (laughs) Get away quick. (laughs) Paul said, though though we, though myself, are an angel from heaven, come and preach something different gospel than what I preached to you, let him be accursed. Didn't he say that? You read it recently, didn't you? 
What's one of the signs that follows believers? They shall speak with new tongues. I heard one fellow said, well, that means they won't cuss anymore. <laughs> Scripture should be interpreted in the light of other Scriptures, right? And beware of people watering down the Word to match their lack of experience. No, he wasn't talking about cleaning up your talk. What are other tongues? When the Bible uses that term, other tongues, what's it talking about? It's talking about other languages that the speaker did not learn. You'll hear the term unknown tongue, but really, usually when you see the text, that word's not in there. It's in, it's in italics, means it was added by the translator. Technically, it's not unknown. Of course, God knows it. Angels may know it. Other peoples may know it. It's unknown to the speaker and not learned. You didn't learn it. Now, a lot of people who consider themselves more intelligent than us, they say that's impossible. But if you're going to say it, a miracle can't happen, then what do you believe about God? If that miracle can't happen, you probably don't believe in healing miracles either. You probably don't believe in provision miracles or protection miracles. And do you believe that a man is a spirit and can be recreated, which is called the new birth? If you don't believe that, you don't believe in God. And you're not even born again. Are y'all with me? Yeah. If you don't believe in the virgin birth, that's right. that's it. <laughs> that a maid named Mary, a virgin, conceived without the agency of a human father, conceived a child, bore it, and gave birth to a child who had no human father. If you don't believe that, you are lost. You are not saved. You're not a Christian. And if you don't believe... That he, when Jesus lived as a man and went to the cross and died and was raised from the dead. Yes, yes. If you don't believe that, if you, well, you know, I, I believe in the principles. I believe in the, you're lost. Period. People say, ah, you're just narrow minded and saved. I got my beliefs. The Bible said, Jesus said, if you don't believe, I am He. You will die in your sins. I'm quoting Him verbatim. We just got through reading. Preach the good news. The good news is that He was born of a virgin. He did live. He went to the cross. He bore your sins and He was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And He's coming again. If you don't believe that, what did we just get through reading? You will be condemned. Is that what it said? Yes. Now, like that, that's not politically nice and correct. And folks don't like that. And it's not included. Well, what about all these other religions? You either believe what he said or you believe what men say. You have to make up your mind. There is truth. There is reality. They are not all the same. We're not all children of the same God. Worshiping the same God under different names. These are lies. It's just not true. I, I hope a lot of people are okay. I hope a lot of people make it in. That you might not think would make it in. God is merciful. I know that. He's merciful. And he's perfect and just. But I would be dishonest and misrepresenting God. If I didn't quote what he said. If I tried to change it. To make people feel better about their situation. Preach what? The good news. About what he did. Can you say. I'll think about it. <laughs> or. Where, where are you? Mark 16. Go with me to the book of Acts. Yes. 
Boy, I thought I'd be moving quicker than this. That's all right. We prayed, right? We prayed. We asked the Lord. I believe he's helping us. It's a mistake to assume people know things. Isn't it? It's a mistake to assume folks are clear and people understand things. We live in a deceptive world. A bunch of junk coming out from places it ought not be coming out from. And people that call themselves Christian. But uh, if Jesus is your Lord, I know people don't like the sound of it, but if Jesus is your Lord, truly, you don't have a right to your own beliefs. To make up stuff as you think or imagine it to be. Oh, friend, friend, get in this book. Get in this book. Let the author of the book guide you through it. It'll answer your questions. It'll answer all your questions. Any other believer agree with me on that? It will answer every issue. Sometimes you may not like the answer. <laughs> but it'll answer it. And it will be right. And the truth. Come on, come on. The truth. Sometimes before it sets you free, it will spank you. <laughs> It'll upend your theology. It'll strip away generations of philosophy and, and strip away two-thirds of your education. <laughs> Friends, there is some devilish junk happening in universities. There's a bunch of stuff, and I'm not knocking education now, but you need to be led about where you go to school and what classes you take and what stuff you do because a lot of this stuff is, they don't even realize it, but a lot of that stuff is designed to strip away your faith, to get the Word out of you. That's what it's designed for. And if you don't have a strong foundation, it's sad to see a lot of young ones that didn't have a good foundation at home get there and get stripped. Yeah. Sad. Mm -hmm. But our young ones, That's right. by the grace of God, do you believe it? Amen. Are getting a the foundation. They're getting, and they know what they believe. And they don't believe it because I preach it right. or because you believe it. They believe it. <laughs> Because they know him for themselves and they know where it is written and that's how Jesus himself overcame the devil, didn't he? It is written. It is written. It is written. It is also written. That's how he overcame everything the devil had to throw at him. And that's how you and I overcome too. We overcome him by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. And the word of our testimony needs to be his word. Acts 2, are you there? The book of Acts is a wonderful book. In fact, if you're studious about this, while we're ministering on being filled with the Spirit, take the time and read the book of Acts through these next days and weeks. And read it looking for these things. You, you'll find what you're seeking. And ask the Lord to show this to you. If, if what we're talking about, if it's true, you should be able to see it for yourself. In the Word of God. The book of Acts should look like a mirror to us. It should be like looking in a mirror. What do you mean? We are a part of the very same church. We've got the same head, Jesus. We preach the same gospel, or supposed to. Is that right? We've got the same Holy Spirit. Do we have the same Holy Spirit that you're reading about in this book? Got the same great commission, same directive. Reading the book of Acts should be like looking in a mirror. We ought to read about what happened here, what happened going, and go, yeah, glory to God, that happened last week <laughs> in our place. That's right. Now, I know many don't think so, but it's the truth. The book of Acts 
is actually still being written. It is. We are in the book of Acts. We are a part of the book of Acts. Chapter 300,000 or whatever it is. But the church still exists. The Holy Spirit is still working in the church. I believe it's misnamed. It's called the Acts of the Apostles. But that's not what God said. Men gave that title to these writings. And it's not, that, that wouldn't even be accurate. If you want to call it Acts of Apostles, there were also Acts of Prophets, Acts of Evangelists. Is that right? Acts of Laity. Uh-uh. You know what it is? It's the Acts of the Holy Spirit in the church. Hallelujah. If you want to call it that, it's his actions. It's his, why? How did it start? How did this thing kick off? Jesus has been raised from the dead. Hallelujah. And he tells them, he's given them the great commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So what do we do? We need to go. He said, no, before you do that, wait. (laughs) Got something coming. That you got to have before you launch to do this. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody said, Well, they're waiting on the Holy Ghost. Yes and no. They're waiting on the day of Pentecost. Because after the day of Pentecost, you never see anybody waiting on the Holy Spirit again to receive Him. The reason I say it is because some people teach tarrying to receive. And they quote that verse. Well, if you're going to quote that verse, quote the rest of it. Tarry in Jerusalem. (laughs) Huh? (laughs) No. They weren't just, they were waiting for the promise to be fulfilled. But it was, it coincided with the prophecy of the day, the day of Pentecost. And when that day came, are you there next to? Let's read about it. When the day came, my, this is bigger than I was, I was thinking. You going to stay with me? Help me. Help me through this. I don't know how long this is going to take. At this rate. Would it be worth our time? Would it be worth us? I I believe it is. I believe it is. Acts 2. Acts 2. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. This is very important. It didn't say when they all got right with God. Hmm? Hmm? When they all got everything worked out in their life. When the Holy Spirit decided he was ready to come. No, no. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all doing what he said, waiting. There in Jerusalem, all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit moves like this. Suddenly. One thing's happening and then all at once, whew. He did something. (laughs) Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Keep going. And there appeared unto them cloven what? What? Tongues like as of fire. Fire tongues. Fire tongues. Now both uh, water is a type of the Holy Spirit. Wind is a type of the Holy Spirit. And fire is a type of the Holy Spirit too. Didn't say he is fire any more than he is a dove. But he's not confined to one shape or one form. This is a bit challenging for our mind to get a hold of. But he's not He's not restricted or confined to one form or shape. This thing kicked off 
with tongues. The beginning of the church, the empowerment of the church, the launching of the church in the preaching of the gospel to the world, it began with the Holy Spirit and tongues. And people despise it, people mock it, but they need to watch who they're mocking, who they're making fun of. It's preached against, it's taught against. It's ridiculed. But you know, we're reading in Galatians, and Paul talked about the people that were off were doing it because they so they wouldn't get persecuted. Did you notice that? So that they wouldn't get persecuted. The, the, the true preaching of the gospel is offensive to the world. And the real things of God are offensive. To the ungodly. Offensive. They detest it. And so with many. Speaking in tongues. Is offensive. And even scary. But it's God. It was God. He doesn't change. It was the Holy Spirit. He doesn't change. It was the church. The New Testament church. This is the book of Acts we're talking about. And the church is not supposed to change. It has. Cloven tongues like as a fire set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And what happened immediately? (laughs) And began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. I want you to read that out loud with me. Branson, I want to hear you. Uh, Everybody online, say it out loud. And And they were all filled filled with the Holy Spirit. Spirit. If you believe in being filled with the Holy Spirit, if you believe in the Holy Spirit, why wouldn't you believe in being filled with the Holy Spirit? Same Bible that tells you about the Holy Spirit, tells you about being filled. If you believe in being filled with the Spirit, why wouldn't you believe the rest of the verse? Why wouldn't you believe the rest of it? They were filled with the Holy Spirit, say it again, and began to speak. And began to speak. speak. Doesn't that sound like our text? Be filled, ever be filled with the Spirit. What came next? Speaking, 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 speaking. Yeah, but they, somebody said, yeah, but it said Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. It's the same Holy Spirit. It's the same flow. But if you don't yield to this, you won't get to the other. It's the doorway. It's the beginning. It's in the beginning of the the book. It's in the the beginning of the history of the church. Because that's how it started. And that's how it continued. And that's how it is today. How many were? The ones that were holy enough. What? The ones that were spiritual? No, they were what? A-L-L means everybody. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And who spoke in tongues? Same people that got filled, which was all. All got filled. All spoke. All began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Oh, every, every one of these words is full of revelation. Thank you, Lord, for helping me. They were all filled. I want us to to keep reading. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. So this thing was not done in a corner. And they were all amazed and they marveled. Here, I want you to keep that word in mind. Amazed and marveled indicates what this is. Saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthian, so there was the Parthian language. Mede language, Elamite language, 
Mesopotamia languages, uh, Judean, Cappadocian language, Pontus, Asia languages, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egyptian language, Libya, Cyrene, Rome, Jews, proselytes, that's not all, Cretes, Arabians. <laughs> Hear this term. Divers kinds of tongues. Divers means different. Many different kinds of tongues. And that's the, that's the language the Bible uses in talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Divers kinds of tongues. Didn't just say tongues. It said different kinds of tongues. Say it out loud. Different kinds. Different kinds. So it's not just tongues. What is it? There's more than one kind of tongue. In fact, there are several different kinds of tongues. Knowing this will answer a lot of the questions that people are confused about. We hear them speak in our tongues, the wonderful works of God. And they were all amazed. And they were in doubt. They said, what does this mean? And others said, these men are full of new wine. Does that sound familiar? Why did they think they were full of new wine? Because there are similarities between being drunk or high and being filled with the Spirit. Elsewise, they'd have said something else. If they just all came single file, speaking in different languages with perfect enunciation, they might think they're geniuses or scholars, but they wouldn't think they were drunk. There had to be something else going on. They were a little too loud. They were a little too happy. Huh? There were other things going on. <laughs> and this is the thing the devil don't want people to see. They want, to, they, they want people to think God is no fun at all yeah. if he's even real. Right. It's a lie, it's a lie, it's a lie. They're full of new wine. Peter, standing by the eleven, lifted up his voice and said to them, You men of Judea and all you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known to you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken. He had to add something. As you suppose, like you think. Seeing it's but the third hour of the day. We, we ain't been up long enough to get drunk. <laughs> but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. It'll come to pass in the last days, says God. Reckon we're in the last days? Yeah. If he's quoting this for the last days to them, right. then we are later last days. It'll come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Some people say, well, I, I, I don't want it to be me. I don't want it to be the flesh. <laughs> He's going to pour out his spirit on your flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will what? Pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Which is another thing we can talk about when the time comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 21 says, and it'll come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is part and parcel of the gospel. This is being in the middle of the Great Commission. Thank you, Jesus. And it started with other languages, other tongues. Now I'll touch on this and then we'll, we'll close for this evening. Pick it up another time. It's too much to cover in one time. But you'll hear people say things like, well, that was for them in that day, and God just did special things to help get the church started and get it going. And when the last apostle died, all that ceased and passed away. Or 
Go to 1 Corinthians 14. This one will help you immediately. There are those who quote this and say, well, the Bible says that not everybody speaks with tongues. First Corinthians 14. Well, actually, go, go to the 12th chapter. Go to the 12th chapter. First Corinthians 12. Thank you, Lord. He's helping us. Verse 28, are you there? First Corinthians 12, 28. Now, this is one of the chapters that a lot of modern translations mess up. This 12th chapter. Be on the watch for it. God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, and what? Diversities of tongues. Didn't you say tongues? What did it say? Because uh, back earlier in the same chapter is where he mentioned diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues as two of the nine manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Keep going. Are all apostles? What's the answer to that? No. No, everybody's not an apostle. Are all prophets? No. No, everybody's obviously not a prophet. Are all teachers? No. No. Now, let's just stop here. Anybody could teach somebody else what they know, but that doesn't mean you're called and anointed to teach the Word of God. Are all workers of miracles? What's the implied answer here? No. Yeah, but all things are possible to him that believes, right? So who could have a miracle? Any believer could have a miracle, but what he's talking about here is a ministry of teaching, a ministry of an apostle, a ministry of a prophet, a ministry, uh, back up to verse 29 again, a ministry of working of miracles. And that actually goes along with the evangelist's ministry. Verse 30, have all the gifts of healings. What's the obvious answer in the passage? No, but now let's stop. Can anybody get healed? They shall lay hands on the sick. The sick. And they shall recover. Let them call for the elders. And they'll pray over them and the Lord will raise them up. So, is it saying that not everybody can get healed? Well, no, they can get healed. He's talking about, this key word here, ministries. Ministries. And the next one says, do all speak with tongues? What's the answer? No. But again, it's the same as the rest of the passage. He's talking, do all interpret? Well, just a couple of chapters later, he tells the whole church at Corinth, pray that you may interpret. You may all prophesy one by one. He said every one of you, when you come together, you have a, a psalm, a hymn, a tongue. Seems to contradict. He just got through saying, do all speak with tongues. Here's the answer. There are different kinds of tongues. There's different kinds of tongues. The kind of tongues he's talking about here, no Everybody doesn't do this. Let me give you three main kinds of tongues. This is not an exhaustive list. Number one is a sign tongue, which is what we saw in chapter 2 in the book of Acts. Actually, we saw two of these. What's a sign tongue? When they heard them in their language and they knew they didn't know it, it was a sign to the unbeliever. 1 Corinthians 14 describes the sign tongue to the unbeliever. Maybe we'll get to this at some point. Do, does that happen all the time? No, it does not. 
But does it happen? Yes. yes, and it would happen a lot more if we believed in it. I was just talking to somebody not long ago, and they were out in another country, and a couple of them, and they got in a situation where they couldn't, uh, um, their, their interpreter got separated from them, and there were some people there that they were trying to communicate with. They didn't speak their language, and the other person didn't speak their language, and they're struggling, and they got to go pretty quick, and the, they could tell the people want to know about God. And they prayed, and they just spoke to them in tongues. And all at once they saw the person nodding their head, and they thought, what? <laughs> and then in a few minutes, the person opened their mouth. It was a woman, this one, opened her mouth and spoke perfect English. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now there are people that scoff at that and mock it. If you say that could not happen, you're saying Acts 2 didn't happen. Now, whether you believed it happened with them or not, that's your business. But to say it couldn't happen, then you might as well say you don't believe the Bible. It has happened. It does happen. Does it happen all the time? No. Does it happen for everybody? No. No. It's a sign. Everybody say different kinds of tongues. Sign tongue is one kind of tongues. Another one is ministry tongues or public tongues. You'll hear people, some, some people say, I heard them speak in tongues and they didn't interpret. So that's wrong because the Bible says if you pray and you don't interpret, you're supposed to just keep silent. That's people who don't speak in tongues and don't understand any of it. Everybody say different kinds. Different kinds. Different kinds of tongues. There is a ministry tongue and a ministry of tongues and interpretation, which the Spirit of God through Paul said is the equivalent of prophecy. And do all have that? That's what he said in chapter 12, verse 28. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Don't pull it out from the rest of it. Keep it with the other apostles, prophets, workers of miracles. These are ministries. Do all have the ministry of speaking in tongues and interpreting publicly? No, they don't. No, they don't. But some do. And we'd have more of it if we believed in it, talked about it, yielded to it. It's a wonderful thing. We've, Phyllis and I have ministered that way. We've been ministered to this way. It's, it's a great thing. Thirdly, there is a personal tongue. And that's what I'm talking about when I say every believer yes. can and should speak with tongues. And every believer can and should speak in tongues every day. I'm not talking about sign tongues. I'm not talking about ministry tongues. I'm talking about what the Bible says, building yourself up on your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. That when I speak in an unknown tongue, I edify myself. See, 1 Corinthians 14 went into detail about edifying the congregation versus edifying yourself. And he had to correct them because, see, they came in on sign tongues. So they, they were thinking we could just speak in tongues like on the day of Pentecost and everybody understand it. And so, man, you had a, a, a conglomeration of tongues going in all direction, and the Spirit of God through Paul had to correct them and say, no, no, no. There is a tongue that you're edifying yourself, but that's not for the public, and you're speaking it out, and there's no interpretation, and people don't understand it. I know I'm hitting this just in spots, but are you with me why a lot of folk who don't speak in tongues, they use scriptures they don't understand to try to say it's not for everybody, but it's because they just are ignorant of the subject, which is, and I'm, I'm not trying to uh, slander somebody, that's how 1 Corinthians 12 starts out. It says, I would not have you ignorant. Is that right? Of spiritual things. 
And even back then, in the beginning days of the church, it was, there was confusion about tongues. And the reason being is because the devil's scared of it. He wants it out. And sadly, he's been successful with a big part of the church getting it out. No, go to 1 Corinthians 14. We'll close with this, I think. And I feel like I just got it introduced to you. How many think it was the Lord that we back up and go to basics about this? We need it. If you've known it for years, you need to hear it again. But there's a lot of folk never heard it to start with. 1 Corinthians 14. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. I am glad to be a tongue talker. Thank you, Lord. 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 1, follow after love and desire spirit. The, the, the King James says gifts, but that's not there. Spiritual things, the things of the Spirit, but rather that you may prophesy. Now, here's another one people mess up on. They say, well, see, uh, prophecy is preaching. And the, and, and the Scripture said, he prophesies is greater than tongues, and it also said that tongues would cease. That's pulling pieces out of verses and misinterpreting them and misapplying them. Back, back up to chapter 13. Back up to chapter 13. It said, uh, verse 8. Love never fails. Whether there be prophecies, they'll fail. Whether there be tongues, they'll cease. People grab that and say, see there? See there? See there? Did it say when? Well, it's obvious. It's already, is it? Whether there'll be knowledge, it shall vanish away. If you're going to be consistent in your translation, <laughs> then prophecies have already failed. Because tongues have ceased and knowledge has vanished away too, which would explain the extreme ignorance. <laughs> All the prophecies have not been fulfilled. Right? Knowledge has not vanished away. Then why pull one out of the middle? <laughs> there will come a time when different languages will be unnecessary. We will know as we are known. Won't that be wonderful? What happened at the Tower of Babel with the separation of the languages will be undone. And we'll be able to understand everybody. That's going to be amazing. And talk to everybody and communicate on an unrestricted level. But that's not yet. Tongues have not ceased. Not yet. Come on down. He that, chapter 14, verse 2, he that speaks in a tongue, unknown, is added by the translators. He that speaks in a tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. Now, if you read the rest of it, you'll see that there are other times when there is speaking to men, but it's with interpretation or prophecy instead. Somebody say different kinds, different kinds, different kinds of tongues. And the three that I've given you is not exhaustive list. There's a whole lot about tongues we just don't know. It's big. He that speaks in a tongue speaks not unto men but unto God, for no man understands him. Now see, that would seem contradictory because we read in Acts 2 that they all understood in their own language. And that's why people look at it and say, see, there's just inconsistencies all through this thing. No, you're just real ignorant. There's just a lot you don't know. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the Bible. It's perfect. And it's right. About everything. And if you don't think so, something wrong on your end. Show some humility. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding. If you don't show him respect, you will remain in the dark in your supposed superior intelligence. But if you'll humble yourself before him and say, oh Lord, what I don't see, show me. What I don't, what I, I, this looks like it doesn't agree, but I know it does. Help me to see it. He will. I said he will. You may have to grow some. It may take a little time, but he will. There will come a time. Uh, I exclaimed the other day. We were riding along in the truck, and I said, I see that. I see that. I told Phyllis, something the Lord told me by his spirit years ago, I thought I understood it. And it just hit me. Years ago, years later, I thought I was interpreting. I was in interpreting. I was doing that too. All, all wrong. I thought it meant this. And I saw it. Oh, glory to God. Light is progressive. When the Bible doesn't seem like it agrees, have some humility. And acknowledge you don't know everything. And ask the Lord to help you. No man understands him. Well, they understood in Acts 2. But it's a different kind of talk. Howbeit in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Verse 4, he that speaks in a, in a tongue does what? People say, well, that's not necessary nowadays. You don't need to be edified nowadays. God's no respecter of persons. Why would he give this ability uh, to me and to uh, many others to build up ourselves and withhold it from you? You're so far beyond everybody, you don't need it. Talk about praying out divine mysteries. Anybody need to pray beyond their limited understanding? Anybody needs to pray beyond what they know about the will of God? Oh, dear friend, if you don't think so, you need to get enlightened. Our, Phyllis and our, my ministry started like this. You've heard us talk about it. We'd go to meetings and tarry. I knew I needed to be filled, but I didn't know how. I struggled with it. Phyllis, little Catholic girl, never saw all this wild Pentecostal stuff. She came to the meeting with me, and she thought, she finally she got tired of tarrying, and she said, Lord, Whatever it is, would you please give it to him and, uh, so we can go home? And, and finally she went down to the altar and said, maybe it's me, you know. I'm, I'm not up with all this Pentecostal stuff. And before the night was over, she's speaking in tongues. And I thought, Lord, this ain't fair. I mean, my grandmother's secretary treasurer to Pentecostal church. I mean, And, and God was dealing with us about our life and ministry. We didn't know there was a call. We didn't know we were supposed to be ministers at that point. We hadn't got this yet. But I knew something was going on, and I knew I needed to pray. And I didn't know how to pray. I'd get down and go, God, help me. God, help me. God, I need it. Show me. Help me. Help me. Do that another 500 times. And you just knew it ain't cutting it. Well, how do you pray about the future? How do you pray about what you don't know about? Oh, thank God there's a way. Thank God there's a way to pray out divine mysteries and edify and build yourself up on your most holy faith. It's called speaking with other tongues. At one point I came by to Phyllis. We were in our little mobile home. I said, uh, you've been speaking with tongues still? She said, yeah. I said, how about praying for us about this, uh, what we're supposed to do? I didn't know how to yield yet, but I knew I needed to. And as soon as I did receive, I'm going to talk about that at some point. As soon as I did, I got to praying. Lord, help me to pray about our future. Help me to pray. I didn't know what, what was going on. I knew something was up. Had no idea I'd be looking at you nearly 40 years later. Branson and all these things. Had no idea about all that. But uh, God knew. And I began to pray in tongues, pray in tongues, pray in, Lord, help me to pray out what I need to pray. Say what I need to say. Ask for what I need to say. It's a supernatural means of escaping the confines of your limited understanding and communing directly with God. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. 
No man understands him. That includes the devil and his bunch too. You got a secret line with the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's called speaking in tongues. I said it's called speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. Stand on your feet, everybody. If you'd say, well, Brother Keith, I, I don't speak in tongues. Well, let's fix that right now. Right now. I'm just going to lead everybody in a prayer. And you don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to do some great big thing. We'll be talking about this more later. But if you're ready to receive, there's no need in you waiting. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. I'm going to pray for you when we get to a certain point. I'm going to say receive. And when I do, we start speaking in other tongues. And uh, if you will, you can speak right out in Jesus' name. If you don't think you're ready, that's okay. We, uh, we're planning on being back next week and the next week, and, and we'll get there. If you, if you don't think you're ready, that's all right. Just wait. But if you think you are, we're, we're ready right now. Say it out loud, Father God. I believe in you. I believe in Jesus, your son. I believe he went to the cross, paid the price. I believe you raised him from the dead, and I confess him as my Lord and Savior, and I receive all he has done in redemption for me. And I thank you for your saving spirit. But I also see I can be filled with that same spirit and speak in other tongues. And I ask you for this in Jesus' name. And by faith, I believe I receive just like my salvation. And by faith, I speak. I speak. Efle mandanche. Lift up your voice. Nombe de re seve mancase con dinge el avrain. El avrain manze non toncendo vile. Emon de sala covan me andeche. El avrain mande que su je vayane. Anemba e sova baneno ju done. Keloso para besete. O fe lo sa dane mongale brema yandicieta. Ele vre manze non non jande o lok de voma. Ele vre mange zonde maya non dia je dania non do ja jiji. Ele vre manze en gandi on dong bian chani for man kong sandi bachi. Ele vrei mandi a je deo da jo o deg siske e je fi je we do basse. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Altar workers, would you come up to the front? If that's the first time you spoke out like that, uh, biggest thing is keep doing it. The more you do, the better the flow. Stronger you are, bolder, go home, lay across your bed, do it some more, do it some more, do it some more. And if you're a believer, tongue talking believer that hasn't been doing that, get to it. Start with it. Is that right? Pray when you're riding in the car. Speak when you're cleaning around the house. Come in here with me, getting ready in the morning. Don't just be idle, speaking in tongues, speaking it by faith. Now, if some of this sounds strange to you, you still got questions, we're just getting started. We're going, to keep, we're going to go and cover many other scriptures and many other questions. So if you can, be back with us.